Assalamu alaikum grade 6 and welcome to your grammar week where we'll be looking at tenses, present past, simple and continuous along with compound adjectives. Now first of all the exercises that I've set you or the assignments they'll be in red so you can't really miss them out. Okay I don't need those excuses that you didn't know what exercises they were because they are all in red and they are numbered. And I'll repeat this throughout the presentation so that you know your mind is directed towards these exercises that are set. No matter what you're writing in whatever subject, I need you to keep arms and cups in your mind. Your capital letters, punctuation, things like spelling, sentence structures. This all needs to be kept in your mind in order for you to write effectively. The same goes for any kind of sentence writing. Remember I taught you and reminded you to stretch your sentences? The same applies no matter what you write in your English lesson or any other lesson, for example. Uh, if you see the example in front of you, my crazy cat. So what is she doing? Oh, she's running around. When? All day long. Where? In your bedroom. Why? Oh, she's feeling hypo. She's happy. By using the five W's, who, what, when, where and why, you can actually stretch your simple sentence. Your timetable. I have this timetable for you in order for you to sort of pace yourself and this way you'll get your work done a lot quicker and you'll have time for other things too because you know by no means are we saying to you to study all day okay you do need a break and if you pace yourself and use a timetable you'll be able to use your time more effectively right so in our grammar week like i said before we'll be looking at the tenses now your lesson objective is to use the tenses correctly in the given writing prompts uh, these are the exercises that I've set you. So the correct tense should be used, coherent sentences, basically the sentences should make sense, and arms and cups applied in the writing. So the present tense, you've done this so many times, but just to quickly recap, talking about something that's happening now. I set the table. Okay, I play tennis. Present continuous, what is it? An ongoing action happening now and it continues. You don't know when it stops. Okay, am, is, and are. They are doing something, we are doing something. Past tense, happened in the past, is finished, ended, gone. Okay, we use the ed with our verbs, but not with irregular verbs. Past continuous, action that was in progress in the past. It was an ongoing past action, interrupted at some point, um, don't know when. Auxiliary verbs that were used, was and when, and we use the present participle. Um, I really do not need to go through all of these tenses again. There's an exercise in front of you. Peter watches a movie before bed. What tense is this? Peter watched a movie before bed. Peter is watching a movie before bed. Peter was watching a movie before bed. I need you to write these sentences out in your notebook and write which tense this is. Right, here's your exercise number two. I'd like you to read the following extract and write all the verbs you can spot in the present tense and change them into the past tense. So basically in your notebook, you will write out all the present tense verbs that you can see and then change them into the past tense. Please do this neatly. Right, for the past tense, different um, articles, different uh, materials have the past tense, like newspaper articles when you're writing a diary entry, for example. Now, what I'd like you to do for exercise number three is describe a time when you tried a new food. Think about these questions. How did you feel before? Who were you with? Why did you try it? What did it look like? How did it taste? How did you feel after? When you answer these questions, you'll automatically find yourself answering in the past tense. I'd like you to write the answers down, ready to present in Zoom class. So I'll pick any student and ask them to answer any of these questions. So this was your exercise three. Right, for the past continuous and the present continuous, I have two exercises here for you. We spent too long going over the rules and filling in blanks, so I thought if you write yourself, you'll be better able to understand the tenses being used. 
So for the past continuous, if you look in your storybooks as well, you'll notice that the background is often described in the past continuous tense. So if you have a look at this paragraph in front of you, the sun was shining and the birds were singing as the elephant came out of the jungle. Now the elephants come out of the jungle, but when the sun stops shining, when the birds stop singing, we don't know. What I'd like you to do is continue this story. You've written stories in grade five, so you won't have any problem doing this. I'd like you to continue this in your notebook. Write out this first paragraph from the sun was shining up to towards the river and then continue. For exercise five, present continues. Ask yourself these questions. In fact, you can choose any, say six questions. Choose any six questions and write the answers. And again, we'll discuss this in Zoom. All five exercises should be in your notebook and sent in the Google Classroom. You need to write the questions and then the answers in your notebook. And do not forget to attach it. Right, let's have a little look at something else now. Read the red uh, sentences in red that are in front of you. I saw a man eating alligator. I saw a man eating alligator. What's the matter with these sentences? Is there anything wrong? Is there any difference? Can you see anything different in these sentences? I can't. They're exactly the same. The only way I know that they might mean different things is because of the pictures. One picture has the alligators trying to eat the man and in the other picture there's a man eating the alligator. This is how sentences can be confusing when you use two words to describe a noun, two words together. And if we don't have a hyphen in the middle, hyphen is a punctuation mark, then confusion develops. These two words, man-eating, they serve as a compound adjective. They describing an alligator. Okay? First picture, like I said, shows the alligators trying to eat the man. The second picture shows the man eating the alligator. How do I know that these two sentences mean different things. If you look at the sentence in the yellow box in red, a man eating alligator. Here, the man eating, those two words, serve as one word. Whereas before in the red, there were two separate words. The sentences in red, the man eating, two words, they served as separate words. Okay, which is why I thought in the first picture, and rightly so, that the alligator is trying to eat the man. But in the other picture, it shows the man eating alligator. With these two sentences, you can think either one of these things. But what the writer, what I'm trying to tell you, is that this is a man eating alligator. And the sentence in the yellow box, the two words man eating, with the hyphen, the little line in between those two words, that serves as one word. Those two words now serve as one word, one compound, meaning together, bound together, adjective, describing word. These two words serve as one adjective describing this alligator. And this way, it makes sense. A man-eating alligator, okay? This alligator, is man-eating. It likes to eat humans. Two words, when they're joined together as one word to describe a noun, are called compound adjectives. The problem most of us face is when to hyphenate this and we'll talk and discuss this in the next slide. Compound adjectives are used. Why? To give more definition to writing. Okay, and they appear before a noun and they act as a single idea. And like I said before, it describes something, mostly a noun. It makes our writing more precise, gives detail to our writing. It actually shortens our writing too. Where we wanted to say, for example, 
in the picture in front of you, there's tablets in front of us. And they're coated in sugar. So we say the tablets are coated in sugar or we say the tablets are covered in sugar. We can shorten this and use a compound adjective. Sugar coated tablets means the same thing that these tablets are covered in sugar but we've shortened it and made the meaning a little clearer and with the hyphen we have shown you that this is now <clears throat> excuse me one word sugar coated is now one word not two words and how do we know this by adding the hyphen in the middle compound adjectives can be made by using different word groups and then they have meanings and we'll go through this later as well but just to give you a little idea have a look at the table in front of you how we can use adjectives and nouns and nouns and present participles to make different compound adjectives and they all have different meanings so the problem that most students and sometimes adults face is when to use the hyphen so first of all let's see what a hyphen actually is it's a punctuation mark, so a little line that's used to join words. And in other cases, to separate syllables of a single word by here for compound adjectives, we're using it to join words together. So its main purpose, shall we say, is to glue words together. Now, in order to explain this a little better, let's have a look at this blue box in front of you. Think of a noun, boy. Let's describe the boy. He's a lovely, kind, nice boy. So we'll say he's kind. That's the adjective describing the noun. So the boy has a kind heart. This sentence is kind of long. Let's simplify it because, as you know, we said compound adjectives simplify sentences and they make the meaning more precise. So we're going to say the boy was kind-hearted. Now think, where is the noun? Is the noun in the beginning or at the end? Look at the next sentence. A kind-hearted boy. Where is the noun? At the beginning or the end. Now knowing this is when you'll know where to put the hyphen. Because the rule is that if the compound adjective, whereas here is kind-hearted, is before the noun, so the noun's at the end, that's when you put a hyphen in there. And another way to find out whether you need to put a hyphen in the compound adjective, two words that join together as one word, is by asking questions and if you ask these questions and if there's a no anywhere then a hyphen is needed so keeping the same sentence in mind a kind-hearted boy was the boy kind yes could be maybe he was was the boy hearted or is the boy hearted can the boy be hearted well no it doesn't make sense what does that mean can the boy be hearted so when you get a no in your sentence you need a hyphen in the middle of those two words. So look in the yellow box, a kind hyphen hearted boy. One word, kind hearted, although it's two words in front of you, once that hyphen is in the middle, it will count as one word, one idea, one adjective, one description for that noun. And what's that noun? Boy. So always have a look at this. Where is the noun placed? Because you can say, the boy was kind-hearted. You can say this, but you will not need a hyphen in there. Why? Because the boy is in the beginning. The compound adjective is in the end. But if the compound adjective is first and the noun is at the end, you'll need to hyphenate that compound adjective. Compound adjectives act as one word. We need to remember this. Use hyphen if the compound adjective comes before the noun, not after. These are one of the rules. Another question you need to ask yourself is can you add and, the conjunction and in the middle of the two words and it will still make sense? If no, it needs a hyphen. So let's use another example. I saw a man eating alligator. And again, we haven't used a hyphen in here because we just, you know, pretend we don't know or I didn't know and I've just written this. Put the word and in the middle. Add the conjunction. I saw a man and eating alligator. Now the man was eating an alligator or the alligator will eventually eat the man. We don't know, but the word and definitely does not make sense there. 
So if it does not make sense there, you add a hyphen. You make it into one word, one idea to describe the alligator. Now if I give you one more example, uh, the boy was tall and gentle. Okay, so I can change this into uh, a tall and a tall gentle boy. Okay, a tall gentle boy. Now if I say is the boy gentle? Yes. Is the boy tall? Yes. The boy is tall and gentle. Makes sense. So here I will not be needing a hyphen. So wherever when you add the conjunction and and it does not make sense, you will add a hyphen. But let's quickly go over the compound um, adjectives and its uses as well as the use of hyphen. Now we already know that they appear before a noun and they act as a single ID. Explain simply again, these are two words, these are two words joined together by a hyphen and they act as one ID, act as one word. We're not going to treat them as two words. And the hyphen is used because it helps to avoid the confusion that can result in having two different adjectives right before a noun. An example like I used in the beginning with the alligator. Here, we're a fast acting team. Are we an acting team that moves fast? No. When you put the hyphen in there, our team acts fast. Fast hyphen acting. One word, one idea. We are a team, we work together, we work quickly. That's the meaning that the writer wanted us to understand. Second one, are you ready to see a man-eating shark? Has a disclaimer, it's scary. But if I read this sentence, I wouldn't find anything scary about a man-eating shark. He's eating a shark, so what? But that's not what the writer meant. He meant the shark eats man. The shark is scary. The shark will gobble up any man that he sees, which is why in this um, sentence here, we'll need a hyphen, man hyphen eating shark. That man eating will become one ID, one adjective. And then that will make sense. Now use of the hyphen. Use hyphen if the compound adjective comes before the noun. Sentence in front of you, this is a world famous museum. Where has the word, uh, where's the museum? It's at the end. Museum is a noun. So before that, we have the compound adjective, so we put a hyphen. If we say the museum is world famous, so you have a noun first, and then you use two words to make a compound adjective, we will not put a hyphen in there. Okay. Ask the questions. Remember, if there is a no, then hyphenate. So ask yourself, is it a world museum? No. World museum, how? It doesn't make sense. Is it a famous museum? Well, it can be, but because we have a no in the answer, we will hyphenate. Use and in the middle of that sentence, and if it makes sense, don't hyphenate. So this is a world and famous museum. Doesn't make sense. Omit the idea and add a hyphen. And use this with any compound adjective, these three things, and you'll um, find it does make sense, and you'll be able to hyphenate your compound adjectives more effectively. Like if we use it for the man-eating shark. Okay, is it a man shark? No. Is it an eating shark? No. So you need to hyphenate. Compound adjective comes before the noun, yes. Man-eating has come before the noun, which is shark. Use the and here as well. Are you ready to see a man and eating shark? Again, doesn't make sense. We hyphenate. Now, this compound adjective uh, exercise in front of you is attached in your Google Classroom as a worksheet. And you're basically choosing words from the left with a word on the right to make a compound adjective. But you need to actually think about the meanings of these compound adjectives. You can't just take random words from the left and right and make a compound adjective. They have to make sense, which is why we are going to look at some of these compound adjectives, what they actually mean. It's all very well picking a word from the left-hand side, okay, inserting a hyphen, and then taking a word from the right-hand side, putting it there. It'll make a compound adjective, but is it actually functioning as a single adjective? Is it actually describing something? Is it actually making sense? I'll give you an example. 
Let's take one from the left hand side, anyone. Absent. Take an absent and we'll take a random one and pretend we didn't know what compound adjectives were. We'll just take any word. Absent famous. Now, absent hyphen famous is a compound adjective in the sense that you've written it correctly, but does it make sense? No. What does the word absent mean? What does the word famous mean? Famous is like very popular, you're well known, but then you're absent at the same time. An absent famous person? Maybe, maybe that person's very popular and he's not there at the same time, but no, does not make sense. Fair, fair what? Let's pick a word from the right hand side. Fair haired, fair catching, fair eyed, fair tanned, fair star, no, fair skinned, fair skinned. The fact that you're fair, you're light in colour, and the skin, your skin colour. So your skin colour is fair, makes sense. Another one, world. World what? World burnt. So you have the world in front of you with all the countries in there. And then you have something that's burnt, caught on fire maybe. Again, doesn't make sense. World burnt? No. You can't say world burnt. World burnt how? Has the world burned down? Has the world caught fire? Again, no. World famous? Famous person, popular person. So this person is popular, well known, all around the world. Okay, lots and lots of different countries, this person is well known. So like this, when you take these two words, you need to think about the meaning behind them. Now compound adjectives, I know they're adjectives and you're looking in this image, uh, on this image in front of you, and I have things like number, adjective, nouns, adverbs, past participle, present participle. So you can take words from these different word groups, put them together to make a compound adjective, because remember, the two words joined together make one word. We don't count them as two separate words. We count these two words as one idea, one word, okay? As a single word. So you can take a number and a noun, put it together, that's a compound adjective, like one-way street. Take an adjective and a noun, a full length, a full length dress. A length that, uh, sorry, a dress that is full, so your sleeves are there, your neckline is there, Everything is there and the length is right down to your ankles. Adjective and a present participle. Take any adjective. Uh, good. Good. Present participle. Looking. Good looking. Okay, what does good looking mean? You look nice. Handsome. You can take a noun and a present participle. Mouth watering. Something's really, really tasty. Okay, noun and adjective. World famous. Noun and past participle sun-dried, sun-dried tomatoes you have when you get those tomatoes you put them in the sun and they dry. You can take an adverb and a past participle, okay, a brightly lit room, a well-known person and an adjective and a past participle, okay. Now as you go across these, as you carry on learning English and the different word groups, you basically increase your knowledge of compound adjectives and add to your vocabulary. I have some more compound adjectives in front of you. These compound adjectives in the green are actually in your worksheet for you to use in your own sentences. But before you do that, I'd like to go through the meanings so that'll be easier for you to complete the worksheet. Now the first one, open-minded, okay? Think of the word open, think of the word minded if you're unsure, because you can have an educated guess about compound adjectives. Okay, when you have the words in front of you, you can guess the meaning. And, you know, more often than not, you will be right. Open-minded. So you're open, you're out there, you're willing, okay? And you're minded, your mind. So your mind is basically open. So what is your mind open to? Your mind is open to accept, to perceive, to consider, to think about new things, okay? So an open-minded person likes to consider or is willing to consider, likes to accept things, any new ideas, any new concepts. Red-handed. Red. Now, red is something like a strong colour, isn't it? And then your hand. So just think of your hand and it's dark red. Okay, so obviously red is, and if you look like red is associated with the devil, red is associated with blood. So it's all these dark, dreary things. So negative aspect, this red-handed compound adjective has a negative element to it. 
So here it's used to indicate when someone has been caught doing wrong. You know, you put your hand um, in somebody's purse, for example, okay? Maybe by accident, but if somebody comes in and you've realized you're mistaken, they realize you're doing something wrong, you've literally just been caught. You've been caught doing something wrong. Absent-minded. Absent mind. I mean, this one's an easy one. Think of being absent, not being there, not being present. Then think of your mind. So not paying attention. Okay, students are absent-minded. I'm absent-minded when I'm cooking sometimes. You know, my mind wanders somewhere else, often forgetful. Tight-fisted. So just think of your fist and literally squeeze it. Make it into a little ball. Okay, and that's what people do when they're not willing to spend. So you're like a miser, okay? You don't want to spend money. Well informed. Informed when you know about things. Well is a good thing. Okay, well a lot of stuff. So basically you have a lot of knowledge, a lot of information about things. You have a white box in front of you and you have some blanks. Have a little look. The criminal was caught something. The criminal was caught blank he was seen stealing the young lady's handbag now you have a clue here as well I have put a clue so even if you weren't sure one the meanings are on the top and secondly I have added a clue in the sentence people should be tolerant towards other cultures so if you're tolerant you are what more accepting they should be choose a compound adjective and the same carry on with the rest of the sentences we'll go through these in zoom class together Right, so a little timetable reminder for you, what you should be doing on Monday. As mentioned before, go through the full presentation and make notes of the exercises that need to be completed. Tuesday, exercise one and two should be completed. Wednesday, exercise three, four and five. Thursday, your worksheet on compound adjectives, along with some fiction reading. Now stick to the timetable and you'll find it very easy. I look forward to receiving your work and also your answers in the Zoom class. Good luck, take care of yourselves, Allah Hafiz.